Hi and welcome. There is a huge variety of uh, small two-seat airplanes on the market out there today. However, I'm gonna claim that you'll be making compromises with almost every model you'll find out there. The sportier ones usually come with a very limited space in the cabin. The trainers uh, are forgiving, but usually rather slow and lacking performance a little. Additionally, most of these planes are light, delicate and at time feel a bit fragile. The reason for my claim is that almost all of these planes feature the same engine, the very engine without which the entire ultralight slash LSA segment, for example, wouldn't even exist the way we know it today. I'm of course talking of the famous Rotax 912. Now the engine is great in many ways. It's efficient, it's light and it doesn't rely on leaded fuels, for example. However, it's not the smoothest running engine in the world and with its 80 to 100 horsepower kind of lacks performance, which is why you can't have space, cruise, good cruising speeds and a heavier, sturdy airframe at the same time. Thankfully, Rotax knew that there is a demand for something new, something more powerful. And a few years ago, announced their Rotax 915 IS Turbo and just a few weeks ago, the 916 IS as well. They're both still based on the 912 IS, but offer better power to weight ratio than the predecessor. Now this is good news for everybody who hates making compromises and one of the companies who seem to have uh, realized the potential of that extra power first is called BRM Aero, a Czech manufacturer who first became uh, known for building ultralights and LSAs, almost 700 of those are flying uh, everywhere around the world, but then uh, entered the certified market with uh, this. This plane here is the turbo version of the Bristol B23. It's an EASA certified two-seater. I first sat in one of those at Aero in Friedrichshafen last year and was uh, looking forward to flying one of these ever since. Now today's the day I got in touch with the uh, guys here at EcoFlight. It's a great little uh, flight school in Mollis in the eastern part of Switzerland, right at the edge of the Swiss Alps, which happened to offer a flight training and rentals uh, in the first B23 turbo that has ever been delivered by BRM. The specs of this plane look promising. It should offer performance, it uh, seems to be sturdy and rugged. It offers a very good useful load. At the first glance, it really looks like it being the Swiss army knife of a two-seater. Working for training as well as for touring, working for glider towing, for example, as well as in IFR environments. Is this the perfect two-seater for those who don't like to make compromises? We'll find out in this video. Thanks for following along. Now before we get ready for the demo flight, let's find out a bit more on what this is. As I said, it is not an ultralight or an LSA, instead it's a fully EASA CS23 certified airplane, so it can be used for PPL flight training for example, as EcoFlight does here in Mollis. The maximum takeoff weight of the B23 is 750 kilograms, which equals about 1650 pounds. Thanks to the gross weight, which is about the same as a Cessna 152, for example, BRM has been able to build a plane that feels a lot sturdier than most of these LSAs out there. The B23 features an all-metal design, so a dent doesn't require extensive maintenance action, which is important for flight school usage. However, this sturdiness doesn't mean the plane can't take a proper load anymore. The opposite is true, this plane offers a useful load of 275 kilograms or 606 pounds, which in this class can be considered best in class. If you opt for the less powerful Rotax 912 IS, which is available for the B23 as well, you will even be able to put in a bag or two more, but performance will become a lot less impressive. To me the Rotax 915 Turbo is the much more appealing option. The two fuel tanks are located in the wings and offer a total capacity of 122 liters or roughly 32 US gallons, which will give you a total range somewhere between 350 and 450 nautical miles. That's not a lot, but uh, should be sufficient for most operators. It's uh, when focusing at the interior though, uh, where the B23 really starts to shine. And I'm not saying this because I love these uh, shiny yellow leather seats here. But if you've ever sat in a small GA airplane, you might know that uh, they tend to give you the impression that they're kind of built for people with no arms or shoulders because there's uh, simply no space, which means you'll sooner or later be ending up cuddling with your co-pilot or flight instructor, no matter if you like it or not. 
things are a little different in here, which I'll uh, demonstrate for you now with uh, Thomas, my flight instructor for the day day. Now I'm sitting here together with uh, Thomas, who is uh, kind enough to show me uh, the B23 today. And as promised, there is uh, no cuddling going on, uh, which is nice. I'm, I'm sure Thomas is a great guy, but we, we just met, so it's, it's good to respect each other's privacy. I'm just kidding, but it's actually really nice uh, to have uh, this, this amount of space in the GA airplane. Um, the B23 has a hundred, the cabin is 130 centimeters wide, which is uh, 51 inches. That's 30% uh, more than what you get in a Cessna 172 and even uh, 2.5 inches wider or about six centimeters wider than what you get in a Cirrus. So it's actually incredibly spacious in here. The baggage area offers a lot of volume as well, but is in fact limited to a maximum load of uh, 15 kilograms or 33 pounds. Now I hear you asking, well, if this is supposed to be a tour as well, how am I supposed to load all my stuff for a longer trip? Well, BRM Aero has got you covered because they offer two baggage hatches in each wing, which are sealed and can take up to 20 kilograms or roughly 44 pounds each, which brings the total cargo capacity up to 55 kilograms, which I've never seen in the two-seater either. Time to check out the panel. The B23 offers this very nice dual Garmin G3X Touch, the L3 EFIS as a standby instrument here in the middle, the GMC 507 Autopilot panel where you can control the fully integrated digital Garmin Autopilot. The handle you are seeing down here triggers the BRS parachute in case of an emergency. Apart from Cirrus, not many manufacturers in the certified market offer the option for the ballistic parachute. And even though I've heard tons of comments going like, well, a proper pilot doesn't need a parachute, the numbers from Cirrus show that this is a feature that does indeed save lives. And I don't care what people say, if I happen to have an engine failure in a single engine piston airplane at night or in IMC or when over mountainous terrain or when crossing open water, this can indeed make a huge difference on the outcome. Additionally, it will offer your passenger a good chance of survival in case you should become incapacitated. Back to the panel. This plane additionally has a GNX335 navigator installed, which means this plane can fly all sorts of GPS approaches. And speaking of flights in instrument conditions, yes, the B23 will very soon be IFR certified, which is why this panel is already suitably equipped. EcoFlight will soon be offering two further Bristol B23s. They're expecting those to be delivered uh, from fall this year. So if you're living in eastern Switzerland or western Austria and are looking to get your IFR rating on a modern economical airplane uh, at an affordable price, make sure to get in touch with EcoFlight. The link is down in the video description. After I installed the cameras, it's finally time to set off. The seats in the B23 are not adjustable. Only the pedals are, but at a very limited travel. All of this is something I usually don't like because I find it ridiculous having to buy a stupid cushion from the local garden center when flying a plane that costs somewhere between 200 and 300,000 euros. It will also spoil the impression of the beautiful interior. In the Bristol there is however a simple solution which are these spacers that you can put between the seat back and the rear wall. It won't change the seat in height but at least bring you closer to the panel. This worked fine for me, I'm 1 meter 73 or 5 foot 8. If you are smaller than that, you might have to go buy the cushion though. Let's now look at the engine starting procedure. If you've uh, never flown uh, any of the fuel injected Rotex engines, um, the engine has an actual ECU, an engine control unit, which electronically controls um, the engine, like the, the fuel injectors and the turbo and all of that, uh, all of that stuff, and it has Two, um, the ECU has two lanes and uh, it is uh, powered by the generator. Now the generator in the engine is obviously not yet producing power because the engine is not running so we power the ECU with that uh, little start, start button there and then push the starter and uh, the engine should be running after the latest 10 seconds otherwise you have to uh, um, stop the, the starting procedure. Um, the electric system in here is quite a little more complex than what you know from other airplanes. We have, as I said, the generator, but not only one internal engine generator, but uh, two. One is powering the ECU, as I said, the other is powering all the avionics. And then there is additionally an external alternator. So uh, it's basically three uh, power producing sources plus the battery, plus a backup battery. So you really um, have a lot of redundancy here. 
um, which is which is great and which is something that you uh, not usually it's see important. In, in a plane <laughs> like this. Yeah. So as I'm holding up this little start power switch here, the ECU receives the power, the engine indications come up, the two ECU lane lights uh, illuminate, and once those are off, you just uh, make sure the prop is clear and hit the start button, and uh, the road tax uh, comes alive. And release it. So we got two oil presses rising in the green already. Police Hotel Bravo, Kilotonga bike, taxi forward to intersection Charlie. So the brakes are checked. Yeah. One thing that's uh, special in here, we only have a few meters to taxi, is that uh, you actually have a steerable nose wheel. So it's not free cast rig like on many other planes, diamonds, uh, most of the technums, but it's actually steered uh, using the rudder control, which makes uh, taxiing okay. for stop yeah, here. which makes uh, taxiing for students uh, a lot easier, I guess. So that's uh, a, a thing that flight school owners will appreciate, I guess. We then entered the backtrack of Mollis' runway 01 to vacate the runway at the end into the run-up bay for the engine run-up. Then we got throttle all the way to 3000 runway. A little too much, sorry. And first uh, we check that the fuel pumps are working, so we turn on the auxiliary fuel pump, right? Yeah, we are looking here, the fuel is pressure is rising and we turn off the main fuel pump now yeah. and check that the engine is still and it's running. still running, yeah. Of course. Main pump comes on again and the aux pump off, right? No, no we, off we, we, remains really, on. we, okay. we remain off. So, and then we go all the way to 4.7 now. We check that uh, the ECU works on uh, both lanes independently, correct? So we turn either one off, right? Yes. So, check the light, this is on, and yeah. now it's good and it's a little bit rising. Alright, and the same on the other side, I guess. It's kind of, it's a little bit like on the diesel engines, right? Yeah. yeah. Again, a little uh, RPM down, rise, yeah. some indications are missing now, we turn them on, both are fine. Then we the prop. cycle the prop three times. Just a little bit, right? Just to make sure it uh, drops a bit. Yeah, the governor is hot. The, yeah. the oil. Alright, it's checked. So we go throttle idle. Should be below 1900 RPM. If you're wondering what kind of... Uh, why these RPM values are so high, it's just kind of the internal Rotax um, RPM value and uh, not the value of the prop that's turning because uh, some of you might know the Rotec has a gearbox and the RPM values are the uh, kind of the engine RPM, not the prop RPM. That's maybe something uh, you might be wondering about. So throttle is set to uh, 2000 RPM, the run-up is complete. Now obviously in preparation for this uh, video shoot I read through the AFM and uh, through the specifications and I knew that we will be hitting the rotation speed of uh, 60 rather quickly with the powerful Rotax 915 IS. And still I was surprised by the acceleration as you'll be seeing now. And take off. So. Okay, RPM is now checked. 67? Yeah. And up. Crazy, oh. sounds like crazy. All right, oh, it was quick. It's fine. like a glider. Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> oh wow. Well. Okay, speed is above 70. We can clear of obstacles. Obviously, we can retract the flaps. Um, wow. Let me pause the video for a second for you to check out the primary flight display. As you can see, I've been holding 74 knots steadily for the last seconds. That's roughly halfway between VX and VY. Now check out the pitch and the rate of climb. That's 30 degrees nose up and about 1200 feet per minute. That is really impressive and uh, somewhat almost what I'm used from the airliner. The initial climb attitude in the Boeing 777 is 15 degrees just to give you a comparison. Now we are going back yeah. to 5300. Five, Not with the prop, with the prop please. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Even after reducing the RPM below maximum continuous power, you'll still be seeing climb rates north of 1000 feet per minute. 
While this kind of performance is awesome, it's also something that would cause some concern if I were to give flight instruction to a student just starting his flying career. I at least wouldn't stop reminding my students that uh, an initial climb attitude of 13 degrees uh, that we saw before will lead to a stall in no time in uh, most other kind of standard GA airplanes. We left the area eastbound towards the Lake Valensee. EcoFlight in Mollis really offers the most scenic flight training environment you could ever wish for. If you, do, if you would like to make uh, some uh, air works and stalls, yeah. it's, uh, I think it's better to climb to 5.5. Five, yeah. five, let's, five. let's do that. Yeah. So we put the prop again to 5.3, uh, three. Three, right? Yeah. And the manifold pressure at 3.3, three, three, uh, no, 3.2, three, right? 3.2, yeah. Three, two, yeah. yeah. And uh, let's... Can we use the autopilot for the climb for air force? So yeah, far? if you want. Can turn on the flight director there and then autopilot activate IS mode, let's say 90 knots, yeah. more or less. So we got row mode, EIS, you know, full dot. Sorry, 90 knots. Yeah. Not easy with the turbulence there. <laughs> and uh, go to heading, then to heading, and then turn on the autopilot there. Now that's pretty cool with the uh, complete FMA, it feels like in an airline of some sort. You have, uh, even have the beautiful synthetic vision out there, but in weather that like this it's, it's better to enjoy the, the, out, the outside view anyway. And uh, you can understand why sailplanes are pretty popular here in the Twirls Alps, because there's always uh, some thermals as you can maybe see on the video there. It's a little bit bumpy, yeah. but it could it could be. So before we do the airway, we can maybe demonstrate the uh, kind of uh, cruising speeds. First with like 70, 75 percent power, and then maybe uh, an econ cruise mode with about 50, 55. 75 percent will be 5,000 RPM at 33 inches. That's approximately what we have. Okay. So we have now approximately 70, 76% here and uh, true air let's speed, check it's what about the true airspeed is doing. We're now at, yeah. it's, it's rising. Yeah. We're now at here level at 5,500 feet. The region of Kur just ahead now, right? Yeah, yeah it's a little... Padragats. Padragats first, yeah. yeah. And so 123 knots true airspeed. That's, uh, that's pretty amazing. We have 20 knots headwind for the time, so it doesn't doesn't feel that fast. But uh, that's a pretty pretty decent uh, cruise speed now at 75 there. And the the magic of that Rotex 950 is that is that you can also reduce um, the power. Let's do that to approximately 55 for now. So we're pulling back the manifold pressure there and. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see that on camera now, but the fuel flow we're seeing now is, uh, is only 17 uh, liters. As you can see for yourself, I accidentally reduced the power below those 55% that uh, I was looking for. At 55%, the Rotex 915 IS uh, really uses 20 liters per hour, that's uh, 5.3 US gallons, while still doing 107 knots true. This means that at this power setting and speed the 915 IS would actually be more economical than the carbureted 912S that would uh, be running at 75% power to achieve the same 107 knots. So while you have the power, as you saw before during our departure roll and takeoff there, you can also uh, really uh, cruise at um, outstanding economics there with that, uh, with that fuel flow. At this point we decided to already turn back in the valley for a, a steep turn and a couple of stalls then. Okay, the, the aileron force is uh, 
is I'd say really nicely balanced it's not too much it's not uh, it, it doesn't feel uh, very light it's the, it, it rather feels a little heavier than I expected before yeah it's uh, it depends on the speed yeah if you are flying slow the, the it's very 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 sensible yeah easy you will see yeah. and uh, if you are flying uh, higher, uh, higher yeah. speed it's, yeah. it's hard yeah it's hard. it feels like it almost feels like the autopilot might still be engaged but we turn it off so yeah it's uh, it's a function of the cruise speed obviously but the it's, uh, it was a goal of uh, mr bristella he yeah. said i want to make uh, a plane for the beginners yeah and it's easier for them to have uh, a little, a little bit more, more force on the yeah or on the yeah. on the stick, yeah. but it's not it's not too much. It doesn't feel like yeah. very heavy. It's just yeah. the reason I'm flying uh, to the right side of the valley yeah. is the, that in the mountains, whenever you're uh, you're trekking along a valley or something, it's it's advisable to to follow uh, the right side of that valley to uh, avoid any opposite traffic. And uh, maybe I might be going for a steep turn to the to the left first. Is that good for you? Yes. With enough uh, clearance there on the on the right wing. So let's start at 45 degrees bank or something. Here in this steep turn again, the controls felt a little heavier than I was expecting, but uh, in no way uncomfortable. And the view outside this uh, massive canopy is uh, great. All right. Uh, we uh, reduce the speed for some uh, stalls. Yeah, perhaps yeah. in direction of yeah. the lake. First, maybe cl in clean f configuration. What what can I expect for that? Is there anything? Nothing. 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 Also, no tendency to Nothing. tip over any Nothing. any of the wing. All right. So that was the goal of yeah. Mr. Bristol again. The throttle is idle. We go prop forward again. I guess right. Yeah. Okay. For the recovery, yeah. and um, I'll be maintaining these. Approximately 5,500 feet for a moment. Uh, speed is blowing back nicely. So we have the stall warning first. Let's go all the way to the buffer. Okay, nothing is the correct way to describe it. We can easily control that. There was a stall starting to recover. Make sure not to hit the secondary stall. And we have Check to yeah, up, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Um, can I do the same thing once again uh, using landing configuration? Yes, of course. Uh, well, I'll pop high RPM below 82 knots, we can go flaps 1. And approach speed in this is going to be about 60 knots, final approach speed. Yeah. And we go flaps landing. And let's simulate like that we're in final now and pitching up unintentionally there's the stall warning so normally you'd be recovering latest by now there's wow that's right that's amazing we can really we can keep it in the stall and nothing bad happens oh recovering again speed check flaps one and speed check flaps coming up and power again. All right. Cool, huh? Pretty unspectacular. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. So any flight school student should be able to, to handle that kind of situation, even in case you inadvertently uh, happen to enter it. The founder of Bristel, Milan Bristella, who also constructed this plane, apparently really lay a focus on building a plane that's uh, easy to handle when close to critical AOA and one that has no tendency to enter a spin in this situation. Most uh, stall spin accidents happen in the base to final turn during the approach, so he really wanted to uh, build a plane that won't enter the spin after all. You can feel his work when trying to stall this plane. The stability around the yaw axis in the stall is uh, really astonishing. For us, it was time to head back to the airport for a circuit or two. Maurice Hotel Bravo, Kilo Tonga Mike, Sector East, 4500 feet, descending uh, inbound for landing next overhead. So can I now we are again? going uh, right. Hotel Tangamai coming overhead 3000 feet, joining left and down mid the runway 01 for one touch and go. Uh, 
wind sock, I can't really see it for now. Yeah, it's down on the oh, beginning okay. of... All right, yeah. yeah. And now, especially close to yeah. the mouth. All it's right. It feels a little uh, it's, yeah, uncomfortable, <laughs> like heading yeah. for, the, for the big water. Yeah, so yeah, two it's, five, it's good. Two yeah. five in the circuit, is the circuit altitude. That's good. This. And we uh, now you see the wind sock. Yeah. Ah, yeah. yeah, it's clearly uh, the yeah. wind's clearly uh, headwind for runway zero one there, and you go all the way until the end of that village there, and yeah. then start. between the two parts of the yeah. village, okay, it's yeah. the base yeah. line. All right. Yeah. So two five still. Maybe we can even start slowly start the descent there, right? Oh, it's too early. Too early. Yeah, because okay. it's a long distance yeah. to okay. go. Here you see a waterfall. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> and uh, it's now approximately now where you would... No, it's just there between yeah, those. Yeah, between. Okay. Yeah, okay. Front no, of green it. part. Yeah, okay. No. Yeah. Yeah, here for now is abatement. Almost every, basically every uh, aerodrome here in Switzerland has uh, prescribed uh, circuit tracks. That's just to uh, avoid uh, any conflict with, with the citizens in those uh, and those villages down there, so... Hotel Tanga Mike, turning base, runway so zero one. And now straight on. Yeah. And use the flaps. Speed yeah. is below 82 yeah. now, speed is checked flaps. One, we we are not go direct in the final, yeah. we are going Always around. Overshooting the yeah. final, to uh, again, to avoid... Uh, that not following the water. Yeah. 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 So, prop is now coming to high RPM. We are a little bit too low because uh, yeah. we have to land on yeah. the on the, on the display threshold. Display yeah. threshold, yes. Look on the RPM, please. Yeah. Two five thousand would be fine. Yeah. Ah, yeah, okay. Yeah. So it was a little too early with those. Yeah. The high RPM. Okay, yeah. now it's fine. Full flaps, it's good. Yes. Hotel Tanga Mike. Final runway zero one. Uh, for a touch and go. You feel? Yeah, I know there's a little, a little bit, bit of vibration. Yeah. Little, little on the high side there. All right. Flaps are set for landing and indicating and uh, proper high RPM landing checklist yeah. is complete. Good. Aiming for that zero one figure there, marking. Yeah. Uh, definitely too fast there on short final. Yeah. But we have a long run, right? Do I a little bit still? <laughs> All right, okay. go flaps, yeah. take off, sorry. It's good for the first landing. <laughs> <laughs> so, climbing at the speed is checked, you really have to make sure to back the flaps early enough not to create an off flap over speed there. Climbing at 82, reducing the prop by 5, right? I wasn't very happy with my first approach there because I was about 5 to 10 knots fast on final approach and the B23 is astonishingly slippery so the speed won't bleed off quickly once you're too fast. Well, maybe second time lucky. Oh, I guess now it's a good point to start the descent. Speed is slowly coming back and it's now below 82. Speed is checked for laps 1. Let's make this full stop then, right? Yeah. Otherwise you want to do a yeah. second one. It's Except if it's uh, com if I completely mess it up, then maybe... Uh, but at this Hotel Tanga Mike, final runway zero one. Base checked, flaps, landings, target speed is now 65 to 60. So, prop high RPM mixture is not applicable. 
aircraft have here may have flaps set for landing and let's make sure to get the speed back fine speed 60 yeah. would be nice on final yeah it really it's not blowing back quickly there right there is a 60 knots Fine. Ah, uh, oh, it's good. Yeah. Can we just turn <laughs> here on the runway, I guess? Yeah. While taxing back, let me give you my conclusion of this plane. I think it is what I was hoping for. It really is the two-seater for those who don't like to make compromises. A true multi-tool that will be attractive to a wide range of customers. If this thing was a card in a child's quartet card game, it would be very, very good in almost every category and unbeaten in terms of useful load and cabin comfort. There's only one thing where others might be better and that's uh, when it comes to cost. As you'll find in my coverage from Aero last year, other certified two-seaters will be a little cheaper, not only regarding the purchase, but also in terms of operating cost. But as always in life, perfection comes at a price, and in this category, the B23 Turbo comes close to being perfect. And if you were to look for something cheaper, the standard B23 with the Rotax 912S is a good alternative, However, as mentioned before, a lot less impressive regarding performance. Now you have my thoughts, it's uh, your turn to let me know what you think about this plane and about this video. Please do leave a comment below, I really appreciate your feedback. And a big thank you to uh, Thomas who spent his free time that day for the flight with me and to the team at EcoFlight for making this pilot report possible. So guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button below the video. Um, that helps a lot. And uh, subscribe to the channel um, for more content like this. If you happen uh, to live in the region here and you want to uh, learn to fly in the eastern bit of Switzerland and that beautiful mountain scenery, make sure to uh, visit EcoFlight's homepage, which is uh, ecoflight.ch. And then you can not only do your PPL training, your private pilot's license, but uh, pretty soon also the instrument flight training because uh, EcoFlight will be offering uh, two additional uh, B23s here soon with the entire IFA equipment. So that's uh, something that uh, might really be, uh, be cool because this, uh, this panel is obviously ideal for, for IFA operations. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. As I said, uh, leave a comment down below and uh, see you in the next video. As always, many happy landings out there.